Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Enlighten Up podcast. I hope you're all doing well this evening. We are about to leave 2021 in the dust and head straight into 2022. And I couldn't think of a better person to lead us all into the new year than our favorite, Mary Ducina, who is a mystic seer and astrologer. She's a mountain, mountain mystic woman who's just served us with so much intuitive knowledge over the last couple of years being on the podcast. Mary, so happy to have you back here. How are you doing tonight? Thank you so much. Blessed, blessed, holy days, sacred soul empowerment moments in this in this season of light, whether it's Hanukkah or Christmas or the New Year festivities or Kwanzaa. This is where the leaves in the Northern Hemisphere are shedding, my lovely Nicole. And so the tree doesn't turn around to the leaves going, yeah, get out. And the leaves don't turn around going, how come you didn't grab me back? It's the process of the turning of the wheel. And so we're turning the wheel to say, thank you, 2021, because here are the points that I won, W-O-N, in my oneness by coming out of the last 19 months of cray-cray to get to the real, real, and to understand what our theme for today do we need to shed and what holds value as I transform and as I welcome and pay homage to what's truly worth my time, my love, my soul strength, and my ability to help others grasp a little light along the way. Ooh, yes. Yes. And I mean, we 2021 was a quite powerful year. I mean, this whole time that we're in is very powerful and intense. And it feels to me like we're still going to have some of the same in 2022. Uh, where do you want to start? What, what, what should what should we know first about what's kind of coming in for all of us? Well, let's let's look at some of the the iconic pieces of what the year 2021 you know, what do I choose to be one with kind of finishes up with. So when you look at the final month of a year, like we're, we're doing, like as we kind of glance back, because people tend to forget except for the big milestone moments in any year or for that matter in their life, you know, the game changers in their life. So 2021, as we got to approaching solstice and 2021, the big, the big deal in December was because they last six months was that new moon, super moon, solar eclipse in Sagittarius. And then what that does is the Sagittarius spice zone in the recipe of your star map. So where we all hold Sagittarius. So for beginners, let me just quickly state this so we don't get too technical. Everybody has all 12 zodiacal spices, zodiac signs, along their wheel. It's a professional like myself and others experienced wizards that can help you learn the sequence and the order from your rising sign of like this sign goes first, that's your ascendant rising sign, and then they follow an order around the wheel. So the Sagittarius zone until March of 2020 is lit up in our personal star medicine wheel. So this is the treasure that we're going to be in a vision quest toward. Second thing, and I'll go back to that. Second thing in December is the Venus, 
which has been our evening star up until she starts to sink down in late December. Venus is the evening star, the brightest on December 3rd. She was lighting up with Jupiter and Saturn. That's interesting. Stars of wonder in a triad in the December skies, Venus and Jupiter, the benefits, and Saturn, the work that has to be done. Take note of the fact that the two most beneficial governors, planetary teachers, planets mean wanderers, the wandering teachers that aligned in our last month of 2021 sky, the beneficial ones outnumbered the karmic Lord, the one of discipline, the one that can fracture and break things into pieces. So Venus and Jupiter were in a line with Saturn. This brings good karma. This brings the magic of kindness and glory. This is the alignment because Venus shone the brightest around December 3rd. Then we have Comet Leonard by 1212. Then we have the Gemini meteor showers, a lot going on above our heads. So December was extremely active, full moon in Gemini at the latter part of the month before solstice. So we're finishing up with the main spices of the last two years in Gemini, and Sagittarius. So let's bring this down to um, Celestial Mechanics 101. Gemini needs to tell the story. Gemini, like Leo, likes to have applause and an audience that will listen. Its polarity sign, Sagittarius, has to do with, okay, I've been listening. I've had a good variety of everybody else's opinions, both divisive and congruent. And now I'm going to decide for my soul's majesty, for my further vision quest, progress, what am I going to be passionate about pursuing? And at the foundation of that is what you choose to believe, what you pledge allegiance to. So what's happening is the Gemini, what about this? What about that? It's like Peter Pan, I'm going to go fly here and I'm going to do that. And I'll tell you a story and I might even exaggerate it, or I might hurl aspersions to you, or I might be a troll. So over the troll dynamic. So I can tell you with Gemini and Sagittarius not coming back again as our main eclipse nodal teachers, soul teachers for 19 more years, we're shifting, we're shifting. And that started with the full moon in November. We're shifting now the nodal axis, which means our eclipses and our soul lessons in in the school of spiritual higher grace. If you want to get in on the good stuff, that's going along with the passion and and the pursuit of your soul's magnificence, then you're now going to start looking for the next 19 months, write that down, of the Taurus and its opposite polarity sign, Scorpio, what they represent and where those areas, those zones, we call them houses in astrology. What, What room with the view, what number is the room with the view of Taurus, Scorpio in your star wheel, regardless of the fact If you're a Taurus or a Scorpio, that just adds a little more of the spice in the recipe. If you're a Taurus or a Scorpio, but all of you out there learn because it affects us all for the next 19 months. What house is Taurus? What house is Scorpio? They'll be directly opposite each other, 180 degrees. So here's the T. Taurus is earth. It's grounded. The last big thing that December lifted us into 2022 with is that Venus turns retrograde on the 19th, just before solstice, and she's going to conjunct or meet up with or hold hands with the Lord of the underworld, Pluto, at around 25, 26 degrees. Venus is going to end up doing this little, I'm going to go a little forward, I need to back up and get uh, a fresh look on an old situation here. Oh, well, I thought I was done with that. Oh, and here it comes again. So Venus has everything to do with what we desire What actually gives birth to our passions and our passionate pursuits? So when she's in Capricorn, Capricorn is all about you can read it, you can watch a YouTube video, you can listen to your favorite podcaster. But when it comes to actual soul, physical, mind, heart alignment, you have to do the work. That's right. You might have to do the ceremony. You might have to learn the rituals. You need to actually put something into practice in your own life, let, learn what you need to let go of that are patterns and beliefs that have continued to repeat the same psychological self-undoing or malaise. So Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, says, oh, you want change? 
Well, stop talking about it, stop bitching about it, and put boots on the ground and start doing the work, because it's the disciple that enters the monastic temple. It's the nun. It's Amen. The, yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's the Indian that goes out on, on vision quest and, and goes out into the woods. You know, it's, it, they still train special forces and Navy SEALs by actually dumping their butts off in an anonymous place and say, now, survive. I mean, their way of teaching you survival skills is here you go, bam, you're out of the helicopter. So this is that moment, the first half of 2022, there's such a dynamic here that most astrologers are missing. Venus, I'm going to go back to 101 here because it's helpful. It'll help people not get lost. Venus, as the planetary, a.k.a. wanderer, rules and governs and likes the sign of Taurus and second Libra. So let's just stick with Taurus because that's our nodes. Pluto rules or governs, or it's like kind of like the boss that we report to when it has to do with Scorpio. And oh, what did Mary say earlier? The nodes are shifting for the next 19 months. The Taurus Scorpio factor is going to be happening. So Venus rules Taurus. Oh, look at that. And Pluto rules Scorpio. Oh, ding, ding, ding. And they're in conjunction in Capricorn as December 2021 closes out. So the two rulers. It's not just a it's not just a meetup of Venus, our loving goddess of beauty and prosperity and and what what forms what we're attracted to in our love zone and how we choose to make our money and take risk or pause and postpone and then pursue after we feel we've got more discernment and, and life work skills. Okay, well, that's Capricorn. But Venus and Pluto also just happen to be everything's intense right now, just happen to be the overarching higher guides, if you will of the next 19 months, even after their conjunction is pretty much over with as we go into mid-January. So if astrologers were just looking at one transit, one moment, they'd get a little hung up on Venus and Pluto coming together because believe me, that's intense enough. It adds, it adds intensity factor times 10, right? But those two planets are in the spotlight minimum going into April, May of 2022. And, and the new year is so packed that we'll probably be talking mainly about the first half of 2022. And I'll come talk to you close to spring equinox, because I don't want you to miss what's raw and real right in front of you. So Jupiter, the next big thing about 2022. Now watch the yin, watch the magnetic, watch the feminine flow. Capricorn is known as the magnetic yin fem, feminine uh, zodiac sign. Pisces, Jupiter's going to shift into Pisces at the very end of December 2021 and pretty much, you know, light up the landscape of the first seven months of 2022 in the most mystical sign of Pisces, which it is a co-ruler of. Neptune's already there. It's at home. Pluto's already been in Capricorn since 2008. So you think back for a reference point because astrology is cycles and orbits that repeat and come back around. So look at your life after this broadcast. What were the priority goals? Who were you with? What were you struggling with? And what did you overcome in the year of 2008 when Pluto first went into Capricorn? All that's getting lit up as we go into January of 2022. Your accomplishments, how you pursued it, how you put the fractured parts of you or the brokenness of you back together now in 2021, turning the page into 2022, that was such an angst or a frustration, or a dilemma, or, or something that just emotionally and psychologically exhausted you, now the echo of success, rather than the echo of emotional trespass, is magnificent as we go into the first two months of 2022. So this is a cycle of rewards. Jupiter and Neptune joining together in Pisces are going to reward us for the boots on the ground, due diligence, techniques of discernment that we have decided to not be people pleasers. We're going to learn to set the appropriate boundaries that we have to with people that come in with toxicity of opinion or, or harsh words or judgment, or even the ones that try to flatter us with false compliments or slurpy words. Let me tell you about Capricorn. Say what you mean, mean what you say and follow through with it or get out of my way. Boom. That's Capricorn. I love you, Mary. (laughs) (laughs) 
So I'm trying to I'm trying to bloom this out. It's like you know uh, the tree here in here in the mystical mountains of of the Smoky Mountains. You start to see in September, October, even though you've got some warm temperatures. If you're a nature advocate like I am, you start to, you can tell, you can tell that the sap starts to come down from the top antenna of the tree people, and it's going into the ground. So it can start to be anchored and fortify the forest floor, as we say here in the mountains. So by late October and November, you visually, as you look out, start to see the magnificence of color changes. It's not the greens and the pink blossoms. It's the fire colors. It's the fire colors. And by the time of Sagittarius, because we have three autumn season zodiac signs in the northern hemisphere, begins with Libra at autumnal equinox, then there's Scorpio. And then there's Sagittarius. So the fire blaze colors of the trees here in these mountains, in most mountainous areas, the reds, the oranges, the vibrant yellows, the golds, that's happening by Sagittarius in this zone. Because we get all four seasons here, sometimes in one month. So what's happening is we've got the fire of our desires now, each year actually, as we approach winter solstice and go into Yuletide. Then we start the within work, your most perfect time to set the tone for any new year is to really look at when I go inward for the, the winter season, when I go inward for the Ace of Pentacles that starts with Capricorn at Yule and then goes to Aquarius, the electrical Yang constellation, alien downloads, star codes, uh, everything to do with the atmosphere. Aquarius is the atmosphere of wonder, of a supernatural favor above our head. But it's a different kind of work. Sometimes it can scare you because you think you've got it all figured out here in the earthly. And then all of a sudden you start making connection with some of your original frequencies of where your spirit came from, however you think you want to define that. When you start tuning into deep meditation, past life, hypnosis, uh, uh, start to clear your inner core patterns beyond just what influenced you in your early childhood, when you tap into the big guns, when you tap into the almighty I am and the frequencies of glory and grace and purging the poisons of your psyche, you know, that's where the word psychological comes from, psyche, from the Latin, the soul. So when you start doing your soul medicine work, it will take you to the brink of fight or flight. It's not, it's messy. It's just messy because what we've been running from and avoiding or trying to get into an intimate relationship and say, if you love me, you'd do this. And if you wouldn't do that, if you loved me, and we try to control the narrative and we, and we start to getting into this dystopian nightmare type of a thing, because it's not going in accordance with the pattern of what we were familiar with, either this walkabout or a few former ones. When you start coming to alignment with yourself, and that alignment is just like those three planets I talked about, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. So Saturn would represent the patriarchal. Jupiter would represent the gnosis of everything that's got to do with higher love and the alchemy of being able to transform ourselves by choice to be a better version a better version, a little bit or a lot every day. As a disciple, we have to come to the point that, number one, we choose the light in any situation. Number two, our agenda, our intent, our integrity starts to be fortified and defined by the actions that we take less than our words. We're letting go of the Gemini Sag nodes. We're letting go of just the words that might get you in the door. Now everything on high and everyone that we now attract into our life is going to look for less talk, less selfies, and more action of what you really can perform. So in the theater of life, Capricorn, in a sense, says, okay, you got the job. Okay, you've got this moment. Wow me. And it ain't going to be with your talk. It ain't going to be with you being a player. It's going to be, show me what you've got. Move me in my consciousness, in my psyche, and in my soul with why in this audition you're the one for this moment. Now, if I'm that one auditioning, if I'm aligned spiritually, I'm okay with whether I'm there and I get that air quotes position or I get that opportunity. If it's not for me, I'm going to see it as a win-win that somebody else gets it. But at least I had the opportunity to redefine myself and learn something about myself. The new selfie is that you go within and own your own stuff and look at the echo of your mirrors as well. What 
keeps showing up for you. That's a mirror. That's a crystal ball. What keeps showing up for you? The people and the locations will change, but what's the dynamic? Where's the seesaw? Where's the roller coaster of like, wow, it used to show up in my intimate sexual world and now it's showing up in my friends or now it's showing up at my job, the envy, the competition, the the judgment, the, the divisiveness, whatever it is. So when you set the boundary between you, your God and yourself, I no longer will allow energy vampirism to come at me, get a tentacle in to me. I am the disciple and choose to be one with the almighty I am, the all that is. So therefore, is it not ultimately me that's making that choice to let my energy get exhausted, drained, or derailed off my path of light? Capricorn doesn't play around. Saturn doesn't play around. Pisces is as far and as deep and as high as you will let yourself go into the supernatural mysteries, the frequencies of the highest order of angels, really getting to know uh, the guardian guides, uh, dreams, and and etheric travel. I won't say astral travel. I, I want to take it up a notch. The etheric realm of where those that are your beloveds that have passed on, your ancestral teaching, your elders, the true movement, alive frequencies of your DNA, RNA is part of your spiritual heritage. And although we are antenna ourselves, it is our heavenly, it is the almighty frequencies. And as we tune into that, there's nothing that can't be healed or altered toward the light, toward love, toward harmony. But guess what? The creator gave us choice and choose we do every day, whether we're conscious of it or not. And I'm telling you from my little corner of the woods, the main theme of 2022 is be aware of what you're asking for. Be very cognizant of what choices you're making because the consequences are coming back as Neptunian tsunamis. Ooh. <laughs> now, here's what I like about that. If, Nicole, if you and I and your audience that's listening in, all we have to do at our little kitchen tables and our little bedtime meditation and prayers in the morning or at night with our tea, with our yoga, with our nature walk, holy I am, literally as I breathe. I inhale the choices of light. I allow myself to be that antenna that uploads and allows the downloads of the highest, clearest, most vibrant, harmonious frequencies and energies that I can maintain, always available to grow and walk and be in glory as a light worker. I allow this. I choose this in every single area of this life walk and my time here. I accept the higher, holy, healing alignments. And you simply just breathe. You simply just breathe. And that's what you took in. More than your vitamins, more than you going to work out at the gym, more than you traveling all over this planet hoping to have an exciting life experience that kind of keeps you off your anxieties for a while. You want to really go deep? Tune in to what's above your head. Tune in to the galaxy that you currently reside in as one of your dimensions, just as one of your dimensions. But always allow yourself to be in alignment. People that channel, people that start, you know, talking to different galaxies or different light beings, you need to make that command and that commitment and that mystical marriage with all that serves your highest good. Not just willy-nilly go out there and get the Ouija board or the crystal ball or say, you know, astrology or start flipping cards and all that. No, you need to first and foremost set the boundary that the captain of your ship for this life walk vision quest is the light, the resplendent light that restores any broken pieces, any fractures in your consciousness from the before times, now, or what could possibly happen in the future times. When you align it in the present you are affecting your future. Mm. And with everything that we've learned through the restructuring of our beliefs from the eclipses with Gemini and Sagittarius, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is, has the pot potential to really take us into higher states of awareness now. We can go as high as we want to go. We can touch the Magi. We can touch the vision. We can, we can actually allow the veils to come off of our eyes with the magnificence by April 
late March and April, when Jupiter and Neptune are going to come into alignment in the most mystical, supernatural grace signs of all, which is Pisces. Now, I'm not saying every Pisces person you know has that. That's within us all. Remember what I said? We all have the signs in our chart. The Pisces zone, house, arena, in your natal chart, in your nativity, in your birth chart, your starry medicine wheel. Where we have Pisces, it's what's going to get illuminated the most. But it's not a pushy frequency. Pisces says, I am that I am. I am that I am. Let he who would seek my grace see my face. And so the best business card of 2022 happened to be said by one of the master teachers, by my works, you shall know me. Now, there's the heavy responsibility and the excitement of the adventure that we go into because the whole Christian dynamic is the fishes. And the symbol of Pisces, Neptune, the ruler, Poseidon, lord of every ocean on this planet, which Mother Earth, feminine, yen, and the oceans are her womb waters. They are her, her ability to take the bodies out to sea and to transform them. With every wave that comes in, we have life and birth simultaneously. It's embryonic, it's mystical, and it's the dynamic salt of life, the, the baptism water of life. The first baptism is water. The second baptism is by holy fire, the transmutation by fire. So what we're going into with late December in 2022 is big impacts with Uranus in Taurus, the North Node in Taurus, Gaia, nature, Mother Earth, get to know her, less tech, less electronic, more boots on the ground outside, even in your own yard, even in your own yard, looking up at the stars. Then we have the Pisces dynamic. Okay. That's feminine. Pisces is a water sign. That's the ace of cups. So when we get into the, the ace of earth, that's the pentacles and meditating on the aces in the tarot that have to do with, and what gifts of spirit am I being offered by the hand that issues forth from the cloud that has appeared before me in vision? I'm being given a supernatural gift. Do I feel worthy enough to take it? That's Taurus. Where's your worth? Do you know your worth? Are you selling yourself short? Are you allowing other people to exhaust or drain your immunity and your vital life force with her, their opinions or their, their, I'm sorry, there's no one that's more of an expert about you than you and your God and how you connect with the creator. So nobody else's opinion out there matters to me. Oh, truly, trust me. So, but the divine, Hmm. because I answer to the divine. I'm working with the supernatural. I love my original birth land of my spirit, the realms of grace and glory and transformation. What's going to happen for people that are still a little too locked up in the selfie mode in their ego is there's going to be a lot of breakups. There's going to be losses of jobs. There's going to be fracturing in relationships. There's going to be transitional shedding of what you thought was really secure and you got your mortgage and your bank accounts blended and you thought you'd have that job forever and through no fault of your own, maybe, that won't be in all cases, the, the whole place just shuts down. And everybody's out of the job. It wasn't just single, you know, laser pointed at you type of a thing. But Taurus shakes us up if we're getting too attached to the material world things. If things are controlling and directing your up and down barometer of your mood and the consonants of your being. And if you are addicted to some things of darkness, if there's too much prescription drugs, if you have given up and you've gone into total selfie and all you do is pornography instead of interacting with someone that might take you on a sensual higher soul intimacy rather than just the physical uh, exercise of, of seeking Uh, personal satisfaction. Porn is lazy. Anybody that's locked into porn, you're lazy. You are lazy. And it's all self-sufficient, self-satisfying without making any effort to go out there and actually meet the dynamic of another soul and to embrace another body temple with something other than sport. So with the South Node in Scorpio, yeah, with the South Node in Scorpio, I'm going to hit you hard because I've got all this Scorpio in my chart. It's time, wait for it, quote my ass, it's time to exercise our demons. Because Scorpio, Pluto, Hades in Greek and Roman mythology, the lord of the underworld, the lord of the darkness, we've all dipped into temptation and, and, and seductions and addictions and, and wailed upon ourselves. And, and no matter what we did or was done to us, the danger 
of the darkness is where we shame and blame ourselves and start to decide where it cripples us is that because of that and because of then I'm not worthy. That's where the demons get in. That's where the um, not, not full blown possession, but the obsessions, the dark side of Scorpio and the dark side of Taurus can come into people when they, when they acquiesce to just a physical earth event or they, or they're lazy and they don't want to start breaking something that they know is a habit they're doing too much of. And it's not furthering the best parts of their persona and their character. And it's not in the realm of integrity. The highest part of Capricorn is integrity. It's the hero. It's the, it's anybody that puts on a coat or a uniform of professionalism to help the other weary souls, the doctor, the nurses, the physical rehab person, the veterinarian, the, any branch of a military that says, I'll defend my country wherever that is. So it has to do with when we put on our professional armor and we're going to show up and not just seek to get fast dollars and rip people off so we get ahead, that's locked in your ego. But when we show up and say, you know what? We're all walking each other home. We're on this planet for a short, temporary time. Sometimes it feels really long in a day. Other times it's like, oh, my God, can you believe the year's ending already? Here's 2022. So it has a lot to do with let's rhyme it. In 2022, it's up to you. It's up to you. What really holds value to you? And why are you being lazy? And why can't you let it go when you already have sufficient evidence that it's not working the best for you? So, yeah, you're going to have to step up to the plate and do some work. And instead of going and exercising at the gym all the time, Mm -hmm. why don't you dive into your spiritual pools of wonder? That's Pisces. It just seems like I think, you know, what one of the most difficult things that I think is going to come up here through the Scorpio um, part of the axis that we are experiencing for the next 18 months is this um, is our attachments. Absolutely. That's Taurus, too. That's yeah. Taurus too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. Taurus has to do with I feel secure in my cave with my stuff. I feel really good when I have that comfort food and I can be with my friends and just the relatives that I know don't judge me. They just ha- let their hair down with me and we can just have some soft moments. T- Taurus likes softy, softy, softy fabrics, soft moments in nature soft moments with their their animal totems and the friends they can just have toast the glass of wine with and they don't have to put on an agenda or a mask. There's a big word for the last three years. <laughs> so this is Saturn's ripping the mask off. It's ripping the mask off, you know, because Venus is about to descend into the underworld. It's like, I'm not going to spend time on it, but if you look up the whole myth of Iana and how she's going into the underworld or when Persephone was snatched by the the Lord of the Underworld and Demeter, Mother Nature, threw a fit because he came up and he snatched her daughter, Persephone, and so they had to make a deal. Six months underneath and and, uh, uh, below ground and six months above ground. So this is like Ishtar. You know, this is like the Egyptian and the Greek energies of Ishtar and and how she's got to go underneath it. So like Venus, the feminine part of us, let's say yin, the yin frequency is magnetic. So the next four months, especially the next four months from December going into March, when we go into the Pisces period, the last part of February, first, first uh, 21 days of March of 2022, are raw, real, how are we drawing things to us? Imagine yourself that you're a magnet because yin energies are magnetic, drawing down power of the moon. It's mother earth, grandmother moon. But when we're in an electrical phase, which we'll come into more so in April with all the airy stuff, the fire and the air signs are the, are the yang and the masculine. Right now, it, we have to look at our own vulnerability. We have to be able to say, okay, okay, it's like the, the high priestess card in the tarot. Uh, when you look at the empress, that can be Taurus Libra. When you look at Scorpio, here we go, that's the death card. Yeah, so I'm, I promise you. There's going to be areas that we've got to let go of, to Nicole's point, where we're holding on too tightly. We know 
that it's really not the best for us, but we're holding on to it because in a crazy world, even though this isn't everything I want, at least it's something I can rely on. You know, it's familiar. No, I don't like living in this neighborhood anymore, but it's familiar. It's something in the craziness of what might be out there, what's already been out there, that I can try to put my anchor down in. I know all the boats are sailing as we go into 2022. It's Neptune. It's the ocean. It's anomalous water events. It's got to do with... You know, we're getting ready for more of an Aquarian alien AI. Some people talk about the negative aspects of of transhumanism and the transformations there that we've got to not get bewitched and beguiled into by a host of different reasons. Then there's, you know, as always, Nicole, there's the debate between the bad aliens and the good aliens and the aliens that are actually demons and the people in government that are actually demons versus the people that are really leading the way. Aquarius is all about we the people. So right now, Jupiter's still there. But as it shifts into Pisces, at the end of December, Jupiter's like, I will exalt your consciousness if you'll just come down to the altar, if you'll just come to the fire ceremony, if you can just let it go. Even if right now you can only let it go in a symbolic ceremony, lay your burdens down at the feet of the master. Throw your worries written down on a piece of paper into the First Nation ceremonial fire. Go bury it in the dirt. Write down 12 things that you're most frightened about. If, the, if this panoramic demo didn't teach us anything, the main thing I'm seeing that it was supposed to teach us, my opinion, of course, is what we were complacent of, what we weren't appreciating enough. When we got locked down and sent to our rooms and said, and you don't come out until you put on this and look like that and stay that far apart, when there was agendas and the governmental uh, dictatorship trying to tell us in order for you to fit into society now you better walk like a duck and cluck like a duck even though you're a dog so it's telling us for god's sakes take back your authenticity that's your alchemy of this now moment be you and if he's going to love you and she's going to be attracted to you your own knows your soul star it knows you you don't have to put on a mask or airs just to get yourself loved on for the night you know if you want to go out there and have the dynamics and the sport of, of human body attraction fine just keep your damn expectations out of it just go have a moment go have a moment but the days of selfie and look at me and look at what I baked and look at where I go and all that, that's dying. I'm telling you right now, I'm ahead of the curve on prognostications there. Putting all your stuff, Scorpio, secrets, weirdos, and those with an agenda that are competing with you or envious of you or that might want to stalk you, be obsessed with you or control you. Yeah, that's the dark side of, of Scorpio. Pluto snatching your ass and take you into some kind of dark place. So stop it. Male or female, whatever you identify as, stop putting all your business on that internet. Stop it. Because you need to have some quiet, private, intimate, alchemical, transformative moments to where with you and your creator, with you and your way of how magic happens for you at the soul level in the most resplendent light, let it be private between you and the divine and you and the invisible. You actually get your proof of how the supernatural, how you move heavens and heavens moves through you and lights you up. You don't need that from a mortal human only. It's, it's big alchemy. We're coming into one of the most medicinal. I, I do a lot of Native American ceremonies and, and studies and always have. And I'm telling you, this is some exciting, soul-enhancing, medicinal stuff between December and late March of 2022, December of 21, because what's happening is as we allow our vulnerability privately, intimately with the majesty of God, with the almighty I am, with creator Buddha, Krishna, however you identify with that, that you've actually had tangible proof that works for you. As you bring your own integrity and your own holiness and your hallowedness, and you believe in you, yeah, you believe in you, and you know what works best with you, when you hold that line and you're true to that, then the yin themes of matriarchal, nurturing, the inner child is healed, the beautiful uh, uh, feminine aspect of being the divine temple, the cup of life, communion, baptism, these are all water and earth uh, chemical symbols. That's what's pronounced. That's what's pronounced. North node, Uranus, Taurus. Pisces planets right now Mars shifting all the way from Scorpio into Capricorn when we get to 
next year. It's not just Venus and Pluto that are going to come together. Oh, no, we're going to have Mars and Venus join up together in 2022 as well. We're going to have by mid-January of 2022, Venus becomes the morning star by mid-January. On January the 9th, Venus and Mars will meet up and kiss in the sign of Capricorn. Are you listening to all this Capricorn stuff? And then Venus is going to, when she retrogrades, she's going to move between 26 degrees and 11 degrees, back and forth, crossing. The 11 degrees, 26 degrees. 11 is master teacher and numerology. And when you add the two and the six together, it becomes the eight. It becomes the infinity. This is medicine for our heart. And our hearts right now are our doctors. They're our healers. They are our master instructors. So start shifting that you're, you're making decisions about a job or where you live or who you're going to kiss with the eyes and the ears and the voice of your heart. Yeah, I think like what my take is on, especially with all this Scorpio Taurus energy and the Venus Pluto rulers um, being so prominent in the first, yep. you know, three, four months of the year and the last, you know, the last two of this is that we're as we come out of the the um, what are your what are your beliefs and what do you believe in now and being able to transform those beliefs into something that is of uh, higher awareness, higher learning, right, which is all Sagittarian energy, having that expanded mm-hmm. viewpoint, not so narrow minded. And I think, you know, with Scorpio and and um, Taurus, we're, we're going to be going through a lot of transformation over what we thought we valued versus what we really want. And how we've, how we've how yeah. we've lied to ourselves for so long about many of that. Right. Well, and when you look at the shadow sides of Gemini, it's it's the jokester, it's the liar, it's the player, it's the deceiver, the silver tongue devil, if you will. That we've been going, seen a lot of that in the news. Um, so, and then you look at the the higher side of Sagittarius. You always look at what's the highest side of the South Node. Sagittarius was like. I've been listening to everybody, but you know what? I got I to gotta walk away from all everybody else's opinion and everybody else's attempts to dominate me. And I have to go on an exploration in my consciousness of what's true for me. So Sagittarius listens, but it becomes the teacher preacher, right? Gemini just wants new stories because it's ADD. It gets bored all the time. It's always, you know, multitasking. And the way that Gemini relaxes, believe it or not, is they keep themselves so busy, they exhaust everybody else. But see, they're always on the move. They're always on the moon, move. And then and Sagittarius lets go of the arrow. Now, why does Sagittarius put that arrow in the archery quiver and let it pull it out of the quiver, put it in the bow and let it go? Sagittarius aims the, the bow up into the heavens, the bow, what we will bow to with the bow and let's go of that truth arrow off into the darkest place. And then the Sagittarius centaur goes and follows. This is my path. This is my crossroads. Now I will let my arrow of inspiration go and where it lands is where I must go and see. So three T's, the truth as we end this year and go into 2022, especially the first half, there is truth with our transitions and there is truth in how we will be transformed. Can it be messy? Can it be scary? Can it be um, demanding? Yeah. Anytime you transform out of what you've grown too comfortable with, what you've gotten too um, attached to, yeah, that's going to be messy. So all the people out there that all of a sudden has that lover come in the door going, you know what? I'm done. I'm involved with somebody else. But you know what? You cheated on me first. So I returned the favor, but I'm out. So here comes the tears and here comes the freak out over, oh my God, the money and who's going to watch the kids and who's going to cook and what's going to go on or the job that you were just sure because you went to college and you got the degree and you got hired and everything looked good and you've done a good job and all your reviews were good, but it's just over. You know, Scorpio is death. It's the death card. So the death of things always can bring the birth of something new. That's the phoenix that rises up. That's the Bainu. Uh, symbol in Egypt, you know, the, 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 the Bainu, the peacock, the phoenix, the, the peacock is known as the bird with a thousand eyes on its tail feathers. So we've got to open our eyes. All that crap started in 2020. So what we thought we were seeing as our truth, we had to look at it in a bunch of different ways. And if you're still out there letting the media or the government or the medical, or everybody else make all your decisions for you. Realize that you are spirit, first and foremost and always. You are spirit that currently is hanging out inside a body temple. You're not your body. 
You're not just your mind. You are a spirit. You walked into a body as spirit, and you're going to walk out of the body as spirit. So why not get used to little mini deaths, little mini transformations by saying, okay, let me try it on something innocuous. This has always been my habit. I always go to that grocery store on Tuesday at two o'clock, change it, deliberately change it. If you never go to a big box store on the weekend because you can't stand all the crowds, deliberately make yourself go do that. You've got to start breaking where you're too chained or leashed or locked down into just habit because something in this world that's familiar and that you can control and that you can count on is how you're trying to like do medicine for yourself. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying try some different familiars. So you step out of the envelope and you're, you're able not to get too locked down in your beliefs because when you get too locked down, fear comes, fear comes. And it's that primal fight or flight. And that's, you know, and you're locked. And that's when pe- clients are calling me going, where in my chart tells me, oh, I'm God ever since the pandemic. I'm so anxious. I'm, I'm, I'm so afraid to take a risk or make a change. I said, how can you be afraid to take a risk or step forth or make a change when we had a change shoved up our faces and in our words <laughs> and in our comings and goings and you can only go to the store every two weeks and you're locked down and no, there'll be no St. Patrick's Day in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing. Astrologically, and you know this, Nicole, because you like dancing with the stars too in, in a celestial way. We're not, we are the generation alive. We are the incarnate alive at this time that is finishing a 2000 and some plus year cycle. We're finishing the age of Pisces. Seek and you shall find. And we're at the threshold right now, those of us that are alive, of the age of Aquarius. We're at the threshold of that. And, you know, it kind of doesn't just happen all of a sudden. If it's a 2000 and plus age, you know, uh, age of consciousness, we're that generation that's a little bit closer to it shifting to more off-planet stuff, multidimensional. It's not just extraterrestrials. Oh, trust me, it's ultra-terrestrials. There's all kinds of things that you don't see because of the dark matter that's alive, thriving, breathing. Oh, sitting right next to you right now listening to this. The the, the universe is teeming yeah. with life forces. It's teeming with medicine. It's teeming with healing and laughter and light. So I'd like to offer to the audience, let's all as light workers choose. Shut your mouth about judging other people or casting your criticism. Don't need it. And I could eviscerate you with sarcasm if I wanted to. Yeah, mystics can do that too. They can do psychic surgery on your ass. Let's as light workers go forward with a restoration of hope, the magic of kindness, of paying it forward for another person and being able to set boundaries going, stop it. No is a complete sentence. Just no. Just K-N-O-W that I said N-O. I'm not going to define it. I'm not going to defend it. It's a no for me, like they do on those, some of those reality shows, Shark Tank and those. Yeah, yeah, that's a no for me. I'm out. That's what they say. That's their final answer. It's a no for me. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, they do. That's yeah. a very Taurus show. Shark Tank <laughs> is a very Taurus show. Here comes all these inventors, and they've got a what? Wealthy panel of potential financial investors. See that as we're ending 21 and going into 2022. We have a panel of investors, your beloved divine guides, the ancestral lineage of who you are generations and generations back that still course through your veins and heal you through their trials and their deaths and their tribulations and their making love and their making prosperous moments on earth when they walk this earth. They still watch over us in our soul pod and they still want to help lift us up. That's what we're supposed to do here in the 3D, 4D transition. Who are you lifting up and how about you start with yourself? Yeah, We've got to start at home. We've got to unlock our hearts and say, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. And it all starts with me. Now, I didn't say it's all about you. Mm. Mm -mm. No, you didn't. (laughs) It starts with us. And how are we going to, my new theme is like, I say to clients, okay, how how am I going to help you level up? You need to level it up. You know, you're stuck. Got to level it up. You got a choice. Is the elevator going up or down? Yeah. I prefer leveling up because as I level up, that I'm being blessed by my stars above my head. And the comet I know is a star medicine, an atmospheric heavenly messenger, a portend like the Magi and all the ancient astrologers without a lot of this tech that we think is so advanced right now. But believe me, it's been more than that in other 
other t- walkabouts. But right now, with all this stuff that we think is so advanced and so internet and so out there with the satellites and la 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 and all that, yeah, really, there's a, still a mystery. There's a mystery every time you take a vitamin. There's a mystery if broccoli will be a good nutrient for you or not. There's a mystery with who you meet and you look at their eyes going, oh my God, I've known him. I don't know how I've known him, but I know him. Don't know how long I'll know in this lifetime, but I can feel the spiritual attraction between us. We are shedding, Scorpio, we are shedding and letting go of even certainly family members, certain family members, certain relatives that have abused or misused us or not appreciated us. And as we, with our own toxicity, have maybe done that to other people, the next three months, the next three months, the end of December into March, let's purge our own poisons. There's enough work we can all do on ourselves right there. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I know that I continuously say this on my channel, but if people really only understood the alchemy of your healing and what that will do for your world, you, if people truly knew the power of it, they would be diving in deeper. Right, right. It's like people that, you know, you've seen the memes on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You've seen these little memes on Snapchat and all this where there's a little black and white drawing and the guy's behind the counter and it says readings. And it's like there's just thousands in line to get a readings. And the right, right next to him is another same stick drawing of a guy with the same type of table. And it says spiritual life direction. There's nobody in line. No, yeah. there isn't. Nobody in line. So tell me <laughs> no. what I want to hear. I know let me exactly. Ha- let- oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah. So what's happening is when it comes to healing, to Nicole's point, beautiful audience, beautiful light workers, everybody that's meant to show up and hear this now, then, or later on, on replay, healing means we've got we've to break up with, we've got to walk away from, after looking at it, after doing alchemy with it, we've, we heal our past by going deeper within ourselves and being willing not to just push it away or deny it, but we have to start with the broken parts of ourselves, the fractured places and pieces of ourselves. And it's like if, if you dropped a, a coffee cup or a, a crystal vase, if you dropped something and it broke on your tile floor and you look at it and it broke into pieces, maybe a lot, maybe a few, there's a decision that has to be made. Am I going to put that back together with super glue or or different products that are on the, am I going to put that back together because I'm attached to it and it's an heirloom and it makes me think of my, my recently passed uncle, whatever, you know, that story that's with it. the story that's attached to it, the story, the movie that you yes. keep playing. Yes. Are you going to put it together? Or are you mm. going to just let it go? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe it showed up in your life for a season and a reason. And part of the transformation and the transition is it's done its job. So we're going into the wild unknown. Do you know the first pasture, the first beach, the first horizon line is the wild unknown of you. The wild unknown of you. So Pisces is all about, girl, guy, get a hold of the mystery of you. You've got so many beautiful mysteries within you. So it's, you know, when you get into the M words, it's magic. And it's the movie that you want to script and that you want to direct rather than the repeats that keep streaming. That's the new word now, streaming. There's not regular TV. It's streaming on Hulu or it's streaming on Netflix or it's streaming on Disney or whatever. A stream is a, is a reference to water. Streams flow. If they stagnate, they start to get algae and pond poisons and, and lake uh, toxicity. So the stream is moving. The babbling brook is moving. The ocean is on the move. High tide, low tide, rivers have a direction that they flow as well. The Nile has different directional changes. So when you're streaming, are you stuck on rerun? Are the echoes and the mirrors of your past playing over and over and over again? You know, you got to write a new movie. So you're not just the writer now, which is my guides have made that big theme with me the last four months. They said, Mary, please, please tell anyone that will listen. You're not just the actor or the actress anymore. You're not even just limited to being the writer of the movie, the script writer of the movie. The final cut is the director. He decides, he or she decides if the scene is going to be longer or cut on the, on the, on the final editing floor. You've got to step up and be a director in, in allegiance with the divine. So in my morning tea or my morning coffee prayers, divine direction, divine director, imbue me. 
I surrender to you. I'm vulnerable to you. You're the only thing that I'll be vulnerable to. I surrender my beautiful heart's eyes and I surrender how I breathe in and what I inhale by the direction of the most magnificent aspects of my soul's presence this lifetime, then, now, always and beyond. Like that. Yeah. Call that. Mm-hmm. Now, when you call that, mm-hmm. all that has served its good in your life, we're not judging anybody, but all that has done the most teaching that's supposed to do might walk away out of your life for a while, maybe forever for this incarnation, but it's higher match, not better than, the higher frequency match of everything that you loved about him or her or that animal or that job, the higher frequency is only what can come. Once you go through that, "Eh, eh, that's not fair, I can't believe I did that. You got to let it go. You got to let the divine divorce happen. The divine divorce of our attachment to Nicole's point about attachment. Oh, I like that. The divine divorce. That's what it is. We're going to go through divine divorces and we're going to go through divine deaths. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, It's, you know, we've got to be ready to let go. And that is very much like the scorpionic energy of being able to to let go with that south node, and just pull it all pull all that crap up that you haven't wanted to look at. And it's time to decide, are you still going to hold on? Because if you do decide to hold on, you're probably going to get dragged into some places that you don't want to (laughs) go. And be dragged into the underworld, you're going to you're going to actually get to face the you're going to get to face the darkness, you're going to you're going to come face to face with the choices of a demonic yeah or and i'm not just talk. i'm not just talking religion i'm not i'm no. talking about the contrast of light and dark yeah. now there's a difference between the darkness of facing our shadows ourselves but you know really no matter how you want to word it it's us that has to turn and face our weakness or has to turn and face our our dark scary zones within us i mean yeah there may have been other people that implemented those experiences those traumas and those wounds but ultimately we decide if it's going to haunt us anymore by what we allow by what we put our attention into and onto where you put your attention and your main focus is what's going to follow you to bless you or to haunt you. Spoken like a true Halloween witch. Yes, yes. <laughs> and ultimately, you know, we have to decide, do we want to go in on our terms or do we want to Choice. be dra- dragged through it, you know, dragged through the mud? <laughs> okay. So here, here's another way to shorten all this talk. Is our truth, air quotes, is your current truth toxic? Is your current truth transformative? Ooh, that is, is your such current a truth good question, yeah. Mary? Is your current truth toxic? And I'm going to venture to say mm. all of us have a little work to do on a scale of one to ten. Maybe I've got some eight toxic truths that I dealt with mm-hmm. in 2008 and 2014, our Venus cycles, our Pluto cycles. Maybe I can look back and go, mm, Mary mentioned 2008, that that was an astrological exclamation point. Damn, I did go through a lot of transformation and letting go and divorcing toxicity and, and you know, allowing the divine. I'm going to marry the divine. I'm not going to divorce the divine. I'm going to marry the divine. And when I got into that sexual affair, when I got into that temptation, I really was dancing with the darkness of myself. It felt good. I had an orgasm, but it wasn't sustainable and it wasn't for my higher good. So, yeah, I tripped the light fantastic, but it wasn't something that was really going to give me what I thought it would. Mm-hmm. And that would have been my attachment. That would have been my uh, tentacle, my vampirical cord. I can become an energy vampire if I'm putting my triggers and my stuff on somebody else. And it's because you did that. And it's because you wouldn't do that. And it's because you lied to me. And it's because you ripped me off. And it's because you went behind my back and tried to get that job guts and glory that I worked so hard for. I don't give a damn what they did. They're not me. There's one you. You. So be you. Show up and celebrate you. As you show up and celebrate you and how you do and say what you do and how you show up, if you're showing up with the illumination frequencies of integrity, anybody that tries to come at you, yeah. Anybody that tries to harm you, your divine guides will knock them on their butts. Spirit will take care of it for you. And I so sit back in my chair with my hands up going, glory, thank you. I love it. I love it to see the divine army come in and go, (laughs) snap, snap. Yeah, go take care of that for me. Done, Mystic Mary, done. Okay, so before we close out, because we're coming up to the hour here, uh, how about you give us your top, what, top three things for everyone to kind of be looking for to navigate the uh, first half of 2022 with a little bit more awareness and more ease, perhaps? 
divorce your toxic truths, the full moon that comes up in both December and January when we're going into that final full moon of Gemini at the end of December. And as the native peoples teach from moon to moon, so from the full moon that happens around the 18th, 19th of December forward into the third week of January, this is where we start to shift with the solar lights from Sagittarius, I'm seeking my truth, I'm seeking the beliefs that support me into Capricorn, now do the work, now do the work. So we're supposed to be doing the work. We're not seeking applause, guts, or glory as we go into the month of January 2022. This is the time to purge your poisons in your psychological realms. This is where to start learning where Pisces is in your chart. Pisces is the cosmic Santa Claus or the cosmic... Uh, divine guardian angels that are bringing you your gifts. You know, it's the gifts from the ceremonial fire. It's the gifts from the baptism of light. So Pisces is where we're going to get the good stuff delivered, the goods. And Capricorn's where we got to do the work. And Taurus is where we've got to let go. And at the same time, it's synchronistic. At the same time, as we go into April, we need to re-examine. And you can write these things down. It's you to you. We need to re-examine. I used to think this was valuable in my life. I used to think just that money or that job or that status socially was what made me feel rich or what made me have value or worth in this lifetime. That's all changing. That's all changing. So as we look at our new top 10 list of what makes me no worth, where my worth is and what I now define and deem as worthy that I'll pledge allegiance to in my life, we got to get that straight from December into the early February. And then as we go to the new moons of January, February, March, then we're ascending. It's the mountain goat. We're climbing to the top of the mountain. And by the time we get to the oceanic frequencies of the third and final week of February of 2022, we see that the waves of change are supporting our ability of what we give our commitment to. Integrity, commitment, and why are you passionate? You got to know why. You're passionate in pursuing what you're pursuing for pleasure. Venus is all about pleasure. She'll give yeah. you what you want. Oh, yeah. And Jupiter's going to expand that. Yeah. Jupiter's going to expand that. So learn Pisces. Mm -hmm. Learn Pisces in your chart and learn the Taurus-Scorpio axis in your chart. That's the very thing I'm talking to my clients about right now because they're going, oh, my God, the eclipses mm -hmm. are all going to be Taurus-Scorpio. That's like sex and secrets and <laughs> money. and Yeah. So that's where I'm helping my clients right now is to really understand that and the houses yes. in their natal chart with that. That's real good work for the first three months of 2022 by any astrologer and any mystic that's helping people. Well, let my audience know if they'd like to book an appointment with you or connect with you further. How can they do that? And thank you, Nicole. And thank you for your beautiful audience. You know, I salute you all and, and I'm humbled. It, you can go to my website. It's Mary, M-A-R-Y. Ducina, D is in divine, U, S is in spirit, I, N is in now, A is in alchemy, MaryDucina.com. I appear on Kev Baker's show every full moon, and I appear at the new moon with Joe Roop on Lighting the Void. So there's lots of different type of dual shows monthly that you can call in on because I don't do pro bono work unless I can also make connection with the audience through teaching or their ability to call in. So there's a lot of teachers out there like Nicole and Lighting the Void, and the Kev Baker Show, and so many beautiful, generous minds out there performing these platforms and these podcasts and these websites. That's the glory of the Aquarian Internet right now. So let's support each other. Stop ripping and shredding other people. So you think that makes you feel more worthy or that gives you value? I've got a news flash for you. It'll knock you down. It'll, it'll cut you off right at your knees. Because the knees and the bones, that's mm -hmm. Capricorn. So as it says in the Bible, the bones know. Mm -hmm. And the bones were transformed from dust, alchemized back into by the fire of spirit. So our bones know. And our heart is the eyes and the voice and the way into the first half of 2022. I promise you. Well, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be interesting. <laughs> That's all I know for sure. It's going to be interesting and it's going to be intense because we got that Scorpio intensity coming through. Yep. Uh, and there's just a lot going on. I know for me, 2022 is going to be probably my biggest year of change because Uranus is about to pass my sun sign for mm -hmm. a very long time this year. It's just going to be going back and forth over my sun. So it'll... But that's, it, your, that's your vital life force. So that's yep. wonderful. Yep. You know, and by the time we get to that first, when we get into start checking your little drugstore free calendars from the banks and the drugstores, by the time we get to that 
blooming eclipse by April 29th and 30th, when we get to that new moon solar eclipse of uh, Taurus, speaking to your Taurus, and then we get to the first lunar eclipse, which will be the WESEC, the Buddhic moon, on May 15th, 16th. There we're going to have that Taurus, our first really big Taurus eclipse, and our first really big from within without lunar eclipse in Scorpio from that April, April, May, most active months of, of 2022 as far as shaking the ground, our foundation, and, and actually getting us grounded if we've been pie in the sky and we've been believing fake news or false narratives or, you know, getting too stuck by someone else telling our truth. So the first, the next three months, do your work, divorce, divorce, divorce that which is toxic in your truth and marry the divine, dance with the divine, and pursue passionately what your psyche, what your soul wants you to focus your attention and cast your eyes, and I'm spelling that E-Y-E, as well as the capital I of the I am. Mm -hmm. Readjust your priorities, readjust your values, Mm -hmm. be true to yourself, to thine own self be true. Absolutely, just be true to yourself, that's all that you can do, and that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing you can do. It's the best you can do, yep. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mary, for coming on the show once again. I'm glad I got to close the year out with you. You brought oh, your thank you. You brought your in Scorpio intense energy. You told us like it is, and that's what I like. I like being told how it is. And, <laughs> and, and also also with the caveat that I am not ever saying I'm yeah. better, wiser, smarter than anybody. I just want to serve love and I want to be that gift of kindness in your life. But my type of persona and personality all mask off is You've been asking yourself all kinds of different versions and getting stuck. If you come to me for a reading, it's going to be like, here you go. You happy with this? Tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. (laughs) Bless you all. Bless you all. Happy New Year. May it absolutely be the best. May it serve you the best. And may it bring you the glorious frequencies Mm -hmm. of light like you've never known. I'll give you one little final trick or treat because I'm born on Halloween. Is that the treat of 2022 and Venus? coming together with Pluto, yeah, is that sudden, instant love can happen. You may think you've never would love again because they died or you had a divorce and all that stuff. Instant, and I'm, I don't want to do an overused word. I'm not even going to say soulmate, but your divine connections are more pronounced in 2022 than they have been in 12 years. Ooh, I like yeah. the sound of that. Yep, it's coming. Yep. It's coming, mm-hmm. but you got to, you know, you got to take care of your own stuff yes. so that frequency can match you mm-hmm. to where you can go. I am so glad I broke up with the toxic parts of myself and how I used to let myself get dragged underneath. Yeah, yeah. No so more let Pluto self-sabotage. be a teacher. Yeah, let Pluto be a teacher. Yeah. Say to the Lord of the Underworld, L- listen. I'm going to sit down with you. I'm not going to reject you anymore. I'm going to sit down with my darkness and say, hello, darkness, my old friend. You've come to talk to me again. So let let pain or darkness finish off their teaching with you so you can welcome in laughter as a medicine and joy and love. Real soul level. Get it going. Love. Yeah, that's what to aspire to. Love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. And everyone, the, uh, the how to connect with Mary will be in the show notes below the video and on the podcast. And I just want to wish you all a very, very happy new year. I am excited for what 2022 will be bringing us all. And I will see you all in January.